Well, hello and welcome to this week's edition of On Deck with Avoya, your weekly travel update. I'm your host, Chris Green, Director of Network Expansion, and we're very excited for today's show. We very much appreciate you for giving your time today to tune into our program. You know, we're less than one month away from one of the industry's biggest events, the annual ASTA Global Convention. This year's convention being held in San Francisco starting the third week of August. And we're very fortunate to be welcoming not one special guest today, but two special guests. How lucky are we to have both Andrea Caulfield, Senior Manager of Membership, and Alvin Adriano, Director of Industry Affairs for ASTA, joining us to preview this year's ASTA Global Convention, as well as to provide us some valuable information on all of the other exciting resources offered by ASTA and the great initiatives that ASTA is currently working on on behalf of our great industry. I look forward to welcoming both our guests to the show here in just a few moments. As always, it's been a very busy week in the travel industry, and we'll touch base on some of the top stories in our Eye on the Industry feature, including the latest on Spirit Airlines and a possible buyer. Wow, a lot has changed on that front in just the last 24 hours. A long-awaited proposal for airlines to have a second door into the cockpit is finally close to being finalized. We'll explain and provide more details. The Seaborne Venture takes her maiden voyage after multiple delays, three of them as a matter of fact, and Virgin Voyages, they're about to get a lot of free exposure as the newest season of The Bachelorette kicks off next week. Never in my wildest dreams thought we would venture The Bachelorette program on On Deck with Avoya, but here we are and we'll explain more coming up here in just a moment. Last week, we announced our newest promotion geared towards our veterans, and what a great response so far. We'll again highlight details on that as well as touching base on our resources geared both towards a new to the industry person as well as our well-established industry friends. And then wrap up today's On Deck with Avoya with all of our contact information so you can reach out, start the process of affiliation, get connected with a specialist. So let's kick it off this week's edition of On Deck with Avoya, your weekly travel update with some industry insights and our eye on the industry feature. Now, two important stories from the airlines lead our news segment this week. First off, what a wild 24 hours in the potential sale of Spirit Airlines. First, the stockholders of Spirit Airlines rejected a lower priced offer to buy the airline that had come in from Frontier Airlines. Now, that happened despite the fact that it was being recommended by the company's board of directors. Then, less than a full day after that happened, JetBlue re-entered the picture with a whopping $3.8 billion offer, which works out to about $33.50 per share of Spirit stock. The new offer is subject to approval from the Spirit Board of Directors, then the shareholders, and then finally the deal's going to have to receive the blessing of the federal government. And that's where this gets a little bit tricky. The reason the Spirit Board had recommended shareholders accept the Frontier offer, even though it was less, is because the second offer from JetBlue is going to probably have a harder time getting government approval based on antitrust regulations. Either way, both parties will operate independently until a deal is finalized. That's not expected to be for about a year from now, maybe even into 2024, if it does get the green light from regulators. And if the deal is completed, the merger would create the fifth largest airlines in the U.S., and it'll probably result in higher fares for the traveling public, unfortunately. We'll continue to follow the story. In other airline news, and from a story I saw in Travel Weekly, a proposed FAA regulation would require all new aircraft delivered to commercial U.S. airlines to have a secondary cockpit door. The second door would enable a pilot to close the door to the cockpit before opening a door to the airline cabin, preventing a hijacker from rushing the cockpit when a pilot steps out to use the laboratory. Now, this has been a priority for the pilots union, uh, pilots union the ALPA, since back when 9-11 sadly happened. Congress had mandated the FAA the FAA to look into the issue, but nothing happened until now. Now there's a new 60-day proposal that entered the draft form on July 26th, and then their process is it goes under a 60-day public comment period before being published and then finalized. And personally, I only see this new regulation as being a positive for travel advisors and the traveling public because it increases consumer confidence, and this is a safety measure that seems to actually make sense, unlike a lot of the regulations that come out. Again, that last part, just my personal opinion. After multiple delays, some COVID-related, some due to supply chain issues, the Seaborne Venture is finally on its maiden voyage this week. Seaborne's first purpose-built expedition ship departed on its maiden voyage Wednesday, yesterday from Norway. The ship is sailing a 12-day cruise 
The 264 guest Seaborne Venture really has some amazing features, including two submarines, a 26 member expedition team, and enough Zodiacs to transport all the guests on expeditions at once. The venture will spend its inaugural season sailing 12 to 15 day voyages, exploring the Arctic, Greenland, Iceland, and the Canadian Arctic archipelago, then sail south with a bunch of different itineraries that include the Antarctic, Chile, the Falkland Islands, Brazil, even the Amazon. Avoya Travel has an amazing re relationship with Seaborne Cruises too, and our affiliates have the resources to actually make sales on this very high-end ship, including our exclusive live lead program. Remember to get that request in at the end of our show and get connected with a specialist. And then finally, Virgin Voyages ship the Valiant Lady is going to serve as the backdrop for the new season of The Bachelorette, and that kicks off next Monday, August 1st. The season was filmed on a recent Mediterranean cruise, and according to Virgin Voyages, the Bachelorettes Rachel and Gabby will embark on the adventure of a lifetime. They're going to stay in the ship's two massive suites. The episodes will feature romantic, adventurous dates, lots of drama, all with some of the Mediterranean's most alluring backdrops, the cruise line went on to say. And while the shows like The Bachelorette are not my personal style, I'm probably going to have to tune in a bit just to see how the ship is highlighted. I know one thing. Anytime a ship or a resort is featured in a major TV show or a movie, the requests come flying in from the public. So hopefully the Bachelorette equals more bookings and revenue. I know the folks at Virgin Voyages will be thrilled with the publicity. All right. Are you ready to find out all of the exciting details of the 2022 Ask the Global Connect, uh, Convention? I sure hope so, because we're very excited for our Meet the Industry double guest feature today. Our two guests, Today bring a wealth of industry experience and knowledge to the table as they work with one of the most important organizations in the travel industry, ASTA, the American Society of Travel Advisors. The work that ASTA does directly impacts those in our network and those in our industry overall. I mean, no one, in my opinion, stands up and fights harder for the travel advisor community than ASTA. And we're very much appreciative of their time for being guests today. We're on deck with Avoya, your weekly travel update. So let's welcome in our special Meet the Industry guest today, Andrea Caulfield, Senior Manager of Membership, and Alvin Adriano, Director of Industry Affairs for ASTA. Welcome to both of you for being on our show today. Hi, Chris. Hi, Great Chris. to have you. Thanks. So before we jump into our pressing topics and we preview the ASTA Global Convention coming up next month, I was hoping that you could both maybe give us a little bit of your background in the travel industry and how you ended up working with Aston. I guess Alvin, we'll start with you. Yes, well, Chris, I wanna thank you and Avoya for having us on here. It's really appreciated to work with our partners uh, and we'd love to uh, work with all of you in, in the future and hope to see you guys on, in our upcoming uh, Ask Global Convention. Uh, but for me, I, 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 I would say I was born in the industry. My family opened our agency in 89. Uh, and I've been working for our family agency for about 14 years before I uh, joined ASTA. I'm actually just recently completed my fourth month here. Um, and it's a different perspective. I'm really excited to join the team, team and just be able to help all my colleagues and friends uh, in a different way. Um, behind the scenes, being able to advocate for all of your issues and, and, and rights. I'm really glad to be here. Certainly bring a unique perspective, having been on that side of travel and now coming over to work with ASTA. So I'm sure that's going to be a big benefit to the people that you end up working with, Alvin. Yeah, I believe so, too. I believe so, too. And Andrew, what about you? What's your background and how did you ended up, end up with this great organization? Well, I have been with ASTA. January will be the start of my eighth year. Um, and I have always loved to see different things and do different things. So when I graduated college, I started, now this will age me, Chris, immensely, well, sort of. I started working for US Air here in Arlington, Virginia at their headquarters. Um, so I, at that point, again, got the, the bug of, I could put myself, I learned how to use GDS. I put myself on flights, off I went. So then they decided to get bought and sold and want to move to Dallas Said, oh, no, thanks. So bounced around, did a few associations, and when this position came open at ASTA, or, you know, a couple of positions ago, I will say, um, I said it melted my, my love of association work and my love of travel into one glorious job, job description. So I, I am here. I love working in membership. It is my heart and soul and my passion to one travel and to see our members thrive and their businesses, you know, soar. So that's a little bit about me. 
I mean, you might age yourself a little bit, but at least you got be, got to be part of what I consider really the golden age of of that like travel and the GDS and how you could find the space and actually get somewhere and get home and all of that. I mean, it was really an amazing time to be in our industry, I think. Oh, I mean, if they had blogs and, and social media back then, it would have been, you know, I would have, it would have been glorious. I said, well, where are you going today? You know, I would have, I was everywhere as much as I could. <laughs> I, I bet that's true. As we get started with our discussion, can you start by sharing the overall mission and purpose of the American Society of Travel Advisors, ASTA, as we all know and love it? Sure. I mean, our mission is to promote, defend the travel agency and advisor community, um, especially for my member, for my members, our members, <laughs> you know, as well as the industry as a whole. And we are the leading advocates for travel advisors and the industry and the traveling public. We don't leave the traveling public out. Um, our consumer awareness um, program really tries to educate the traveling public on the importance of using an ASTA member travel advisor when you when you you know start to book your your vacation plans or business travel whatever it is and and we do that through proactive representation shared knowledge and enhancement of professionalism and we'll talk more about our verified travel advisor program and how important that is um, and we're poised to really help ensure the survival and the rebound of the travel industry and the advisor community. We really are. And we do this through our advocacy work. And we'll talk about that a little later on all levels of government from the state to local, as well as federal within the industry as a whole, as well as again, with the, the consumer. Yeah, you guys are certainly all over it. And I know during the whole COVID situation, there wasn't a week that went by on our program where we didn't talk a little bit about some ASTA initiative to make sure that the politicians just knew that we were hurting and that we needed that ear and we needed that support if our industry was going to thrive and survive. So certainly thank you for all of that great work. And hard to believe that here we are less than a month away from the start of the ASTA Global Convention seemed just like a couple of weeks ago. I was in Chicago for last year's event. Mm -hmm. And now I'm getting ready to go out to San Francisco for this year's. Can you share a preview of what those attending can expect this year from the ASTA Global Convention? Yeah, and I'll take this one. Um, actually, I mean, everyone here in ASTA is super excited. Um, we're heading over to the West Coast, to our host city of San Francisco. Um, we haven't been to the West Coast for a few years, so AGC and the Golden State, uh, we really, really just can't wait. And I mean, we've packed it in with tons of content and programming. And I, I can tell you, I mean, there's so many changes that have happened in our industry, whether it's uh, adaptations, innovations. Um, but for us, it was really important to highlight how the industry has evolved. Um, the pandemic was very challenging, but our industry, it really adapted uh, and it evolved. And this year in AGC, we plan to celebrate all of our successes. So we're, there's tons of uh, education. There's 15 amazing education sessions uh, from a variety of subjects, from brand recognition, uh, terms and training, uh, training, uh, terms and conditions training, um, and of course, advanced trainings, uh, training like in niches of luxury travel, uh, destination weddings, and more. And of, and we've got some great uh, keynote speakers for the first time ever. We, we're having uh, the CEO of Southwest Airlines, Bob Jordan, to share his insights and perspectives on the current state of the industry, and as well as Arnold Donald, the beloved leader of the Carnival Corporation. Both uh, great leaders uh, in different sectors of, the, of travel, but um, both high caliber speakers. So Absolutely. yeah, really excited. Yeah, for sure. And you really highlighted an important word there, Alvin, in the word change, because anybody that's been in our industry, even before COVID, for, for a couple of years knows that change and travel go hand in hand. You know what I mean? Like chocolate and peanut butter. And so if you're not <laughs> adaptable and you're not ready to change, and you're not going to fight for those changes, then you're probably in the wrong industry to begin with. So, you know, change is just inevitable in our industry. And it kind of brings me up to my follow-up question, which is why are events like the ASTA Global Convention so important for a travel advisor to participate in and engage in to keep that finger on the pulse of what's going on? You know, I, I think about it this way. Um, it's, it's about learning from each other. I mean, if you if you, you're learning, you should be learning every second, every minute of the day, and bringing together your your fellow colleagues and you know people within the industry who have experienced the same things you have, you know, but may have dealt with it differently. Learning and and you know bouncing ideas off each other is so important, and it, it really does give a new member 
for a new a first time attendee, the experience of what ASTA is about and how much information that you know, we, we provide for our members and um, just the excitement of being together. I will plug my own education session at this moment. If you, you know, I'm doing an, a new member as well as a, a first time attendee session on Wednesday afternoon. And we're gonna have a panel of some advisors talk about the importance of making connections. And you know, we've sort of lost that ability, I think a little bit over the last few years because we haven't been together. And we've learned to adjust it a different way, but now we're coming together again. And I think we're relearning, you know, the different ways to make connections. So we're gonna have a good discussion about that. Get like, the first step is to get to Asta Global Convention and, and, and network and um, facilitate um, learning through that, that process. And I just wanna chime in real quick, uh, Chris. Um, you know, we learned through the pandemic that, business, that our businesses can survive through challenging times, but it won't really thrive. And that's because our businesses are, are all about building relationships. And it's really hard to do that through screens and without real, you know, in-person connections. So, you know, attending AGC, you'll be able to network and build a community, um, which are, have been staples of success for our industry. And, you know, we, we all just went through a crisis. So I feel that advisors really understand uh, the, the need to connect um, and it's part of our success. Makes a lot of sense to me. You know, at Avoya Travel, we always like to encourage engagement with things that have a real return on investment for the business owner. You think it's safe to say that agents and agencies that engage with ASTA, whether it's your ongoing initiatives or the global convention, that they end up selling more and generating more commissions after starting that engagement? Oh, yeah, without a doubt without a question. And I say it through experience and, you know, watching how advisors have evolved their careers uh, and being a member, you know, being a member means, doesn't really mean anything until you actually participate. And the more you give to this industry, the more you'll get back. You know, although we have many resources, as Andrea mentioned, ASSA enables you to connect and engage with people and organizations that many, many advisors may find unreachable. Um, you know, and credibility by association is really important. And social media is a new marketing platform that broadcasts you and your agency and who you associate with. So being able to access suppliers during our events, uh, voicing our, our issue, uh, your, your issues and concerns on, on, uh, with elected officials at an advocacy day, and then being able to grow with others in industries are benefits that, mo you know, that people just uh, forget about. But yeah, they're all part of intangible benefits that you can receive at Aston's events. Yeah, for sure. All those little building blocks that eventually you put all of the building blocks together and you see this amazing wall of success that you you built. I know we're still a month away from this year's event, but I can't help but kind of want to sneak around the corner and take a look at 2023, the Asta Global Convention, because we're going to beautiful Puerto Rico next spring. And that's going to be so exciting as far as a location for that event. Oh, I agree. I was, you know, and it's a whole new month too. It's, it's that early spring, you know, we're going to kick off an early start to the summer vacation season because everybody's going to want to extend and go to the beach, but we're really excited to work with our partners down at, you know, Discover Puerto Rico and, and, you know, in the, the, the land of where you feel like you're going to a, a faraway destination, but you don't need your passport at all. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's exciting. It's it's gonna be a fresh and, and just, a, a you know, different for ASTA for sure. We've done several international events in our time, but having it this close to, to the States and the East Coast and, and just easy direct, you know, or some direct flights and to get there, it's, it's exciting. And I know they're rolling out the red carpet for us, so. I know I'm very excited already and it's you know I mean it's it's less than a year away I still got San Francisco don't get me wrong San Francisco I'm excited to come up and and, and enjoy that fantastic event but I, I will say that 2023 looks like it has the potential to be a pretty special event so congratulations already in advance for that. Um, we go from looking that far ahead to just taking a little look back and ASTA recently held its annual legislative days in Washington DC. I know our co-CEO Jeff Anderson was personally involved. Can you share with us some of the initiatives you had this year and what some of the outcomes were for this year's event? Sure, it, it was exciting. And, you know, it was funny, like two weeks before, you know, we, we set the issues and, you know, the number one issues at, at that time in mid-June, early June were get rid of the inbound testing, you know, and, and then we were going to focus on the, the bringing back the ERTC credit, you know, that was taken away, you know, agency owners and, you know, 
individuals were relying on that money and those funds to, to survive. Um, so, you know, fortunately, inbound testing, you know, went away before, you know, we didn't think it would happen. I think Evan put into the air, it's never going to happen before ledge day. And, and by, you know, I don't know if he was Nutradamus or what, but he caught, we'll say it was Evan's fault. So then we're racing to find something new, but we ended up bringing 216 attendees from 43 states, which is a huge record for us. So Avoya Network, if you're in some, you know, we need seven more states, Alaska, South Dakota, several places, but weren't representative. So plan now to be there. We want to get 50 states represented. Um, we had 196 meetings, um, congressional meetings, 45 of which were with the actual representative. And we added 19 bipartisan co-sponsors to, to the bills that we were doing for the ERTC and the Visit America Act. And that act was making a space in Congress for a, a travel czar, I would even call it, uh, in the uh, Commerce Department. So somebody understanding the role of the travel industry as a whole um, and being able to funnel information out. So we're trying to get that bill passed. So if there's still an advocacy site on our website on ask.org, a way to get involved, we still have um, emails you can send to your representative to encourage them to sign on to these bills. So make sure you're making that happen. We also had a, a $50,000 raised by Vanessa McGovern and Shannon Cunningham from Gifted did Facebook Lives and raise money for our ASTAPAC and our, you know, our funds there to continue this work. And it was really exciting. It was actually the first time I actually got to step in the role of um, going with um, a, a lady member from Vermont. It was, it was amazing. It, it was also pretty scary that 25 year olds are really running the country and, you know, it's, <laughs> it, but what a way to, to help tell their story. Um, they don't, they can hear from Asta and, and Evan and Jesse and Lou all the time, but they want to hear from their constituents and really understand what they're going through. And then we're not out of this crisis at all. Um, and making them understand that they don't get paid till their clients come home. So when you have uh, people canceling, you know, every six months, cause they're just not ready yet to travel. This, that advisor is working for free. So really important conversations. If I always say, if you can't do one, can only do one thing for, with ASTA, Ledge Day is so important because you, totally you, you can get your voice heard. And it's obviously they listed 19, 19 more representatives signed on to these bills. So it does make a difference. It really does. I mean, it goes back to that engagement word that we were talking about earlier even though it goes into another form. And it makes sense because no matter what you represent, no matter what part of the country, the travel and tourism industry is a major factor mm -hmm. in your economics. I don't care where you are. I don't care mm -hmm. what other things represent your labor base. The tourism and travel industry are vital to where you live. And if you're a representative and you represent people, you need to be aware of what's going on in our industry. So again, I commend you guys on that great work. I know uh, Jeff Anderson, again, our co-CEO came home, was really fired up about participating. And we look forward to, again, being part of that great initiative when it happens again next year. When we, you know, you, Andrew, you were talking about for a second that, you know, we're not out of the woods yet and that there's still challenges, of course, and everything that we've been through in the last couple of years, some of the challenges that still exist in the supply chain now. But what are you hearing from the vendor partners of Vast on the future of our industry? Are, are they excited? Are they scared? What's their thoughts about what's to come? Well, I mean, industry-wise, across the board, the future looks bright. Um, the, the recovery looks strong, and many of our partners and buyers are enjoying tremendous traffic and volume right now. And as you know, we're still having, we still see bottlenecks and log jams and travel. However, we know that these issues can be corrected and resolved. And that's what makes us so excited, that these are manageable issues, issues that we can plan, strategize, and prepare for better. So as we move forward as an industry, we'll continue to see more efficiencies and synergies that will accelerate us even more. So the future is bright, really excited for the end of 2022. Perfect, I love the fact that the future is so bright. And that's what we've heard from so many different sectors. Yeah. Andrea Caulfield, Senior Manager of Membership and Alvin Adriano, Director of Industry Affairs for Astar, our very special Meet the Industry guest today here on On Deck with Avoya. Here's one that I'd ask each of you, but what is a piece of advice that you might pass along to someone that's 
new to the industry that would help them maybe get off on the right foot in this great field, considering that you both have two different sets of backgrounds that you bring to, to your positions now? You want to go first? Huh? I'll go first. So speaking from the membership side of things, um, you know, obviously joining your trade association is very important, but we, you know, we do have a student membership and, you know, they join and they come in and they can get a little taste of what ASTA is all about and connect with those industry, you know, folks and, and have, you know, listen to the education that's provided. And, um, it's just about, again, making those connections and engagement go, you know, we have a lot of great local chapters, um, with ASTA that provide a community to, to be a part of, that they can take advantage of, you know, learning from, you know, some seasoned advisors and, you know, making some supplier connections on, on that local chapter level and just meeting people and asking the questions, you know, how did you handle this? You know, it, it's interesting as we've met, you know, we've had a lot of new members, for, you know, very fortunate to have a lot of new members come in, but they all started their business like January, February of 2020. I said, what a way to jump in the deep end of the pool, but what a way now that they can mentor someone else because they have been through some of the hardest times. So um, that's really what my piece of reach out and ask questions and, and find somebody that you can really, you know, connect with and, and, you know, be a partner with um, as you go through this is um, the, the step into getting involved in the industry as a travel advisor. Oh, I love that. And, you know, I, I'll just piggyback. I mean, networking is really important to create visibility. Um, but, you know, I think we all learned in this industry that community is such and collaboration is, is vital for our success. We need to collaborate with more as a collective unit, as a collective industry, and we gain more. Um, you know, in, in my own experience, in my first 12 years, you know, I, I felt like I could do everything myself. I, I felt like all the adv other advisors were my competition, didn't want to share. But through the crisis of the pandemic, you know, we saw a lot of collaborations, a lot of people building together. And um, it opened up a, a new resource, which is each other. And so when you start trying to figure out how you can become valuable for your customers, you start looking how you can be valuable to your industry. And that's where you can uh, find the greatest resource, which is each other, building off each other's failures to find success. So as you start meeting more people, start meeting more people in the industry, suppliers, uh, consortiums, um, you know, high level people, um, you just start realizing that you're not alone. And I think that's one of the strongest emotion that you can, you can capture as an entrepreneur, that you're not alone. Absolutely. Very well put, Alan. What about outside of work? We all know that travel benefits are one of the great perks of being in our industry. There's no two ways about it. Could each of you maybe share a fun place that you visited and what made that trip so exciting from being a travel professional? Oh, it's, it was so hard. You know, I was racking my brain to decide because I am you know, fortunate to work with an association that we have had some amazing destinations that we have gone to. So, but I, ha I have to go back with my son's last family vacation. And that was in 17, I guess, before he graduated high school, we want, he wanted to go to Mount Rushmore. And I said, okay, called my travel advisor because I had, have no idea. And they got it together and what an amazing, we did a little road tripping. We did a little, you know, hiking around, but I, I don't know, there was something about just having no schedule and just deciding what we were going to come upon you know we stopped at this big general store in in south dakota and we spent hours in there we were like what is this place but it, it's those times that south dakota who you know helped me put it all together as you know exactly where to go where to what to where to stay best use of time all those wonderful things and of course it was beautiful and so I think for me, just the, the randomness of things that you come across when you go to a new destination. And that's why finding a new place every time I travel is so important because I want to see something different. I, I don't want to see the same thing twice. Very well put. What about you, Alvin? Yeah, well, you know, being in this industry, you get spoiled because you just think everything's accessible. <laughs> but, you know, during the pandemic, I really was like, hey, you know, let's, let's start driving more and seeing, you know, what can we do while we drive? So me and my wife, we met at Virginia Beach. We went to school out there. And so we drove down there, brought our, uh, our kids and enjoyed it. But we started feeling the love for, for road trips. And, you know, it's not a trip that I've gone yet, but we're planning. We're planning a family reunion where we plan uh, flying to Sedona. I mean, 
you know, Flagstaff, Arizona, and renting RVs and then RVing it all the way to Las Vegas. So we're, we're planning that right now for 2023. That seems going to be an exciting, exhilarating kind of trip. Absolutely. I'm excited for you guys. That sounds like <laughs> a lot of fun. It, it's because it goes to the to the basics of who we are, I think, as human beings. Yeah. I mean, traveling and exploring, there's such basic human traits yeah. and that desire to see something new, experience something new. You think the basic premise of that will ensure that our travel industry always survives in some way, despite any challenges that present themselves short term? I, gonna, I, I absolutely think so. And it's evident with the research we've done that people are forgetting their home home makeovers and they want to go on vacation. They're, they're spending money to travel. And it does come down to wanting to experience something outside of yourself and seeing someplace new and different. And I'll have to say in that the generation my son is at, at almost 22 years old, he doesn't want to stay sedentary. He wants to see the world. And I think a lot of his friends are like that. They want to explore. They want to see what's out there and um, what makes it good and bad. Um, it, you know, seeing something outside of what you, you, you know, are comfortable with, making yourself uncomfortable has always been something I've instilled in him I said you got to get uncomfortable to learn and to grow so I think travel is going to be that way to do it it's it's you can't do it sitting you can do it on a virtual tour of some place but a virtual wine tasting is not the same as a you know experiencing it with somebody who's educated in in that wine and seeing how it started and grow so yes I make everything about wine but <laughs> <laughs> could be worse things <laughs> That's, that's a lot of fun. You know, before we wrap up our, our interview today, any other exciting bits of news from the ASTA camp that either one of you would like to share with our audience today? Um, well, let's see. We have a few promotions for memberships still happening. Okay. Um, we have the Royal 22 um, chance to win a, a cabin on um, the Allure. So that ends on the 31st. So if you haven't renewed or joined ASTA yet and you use that code, you'll get a chance to win one of those 500 cabins thanks to Royal Caribbean and Vicki and her team there. Um, Sandals is also offering $100 off membership if you are wanting to join us in the Caribbean for our Caribbean showcase in the Bahamas in September. Um, so all that information is on ASTA.org. And I know VTA is now um, on sale. So if you want to start some education program and you're a member of ASTA, VTA program is our continuing education program and it's 50% off right now through September 10th or 11th, I believe. So there's uh, it's VTA summer 2022. It's a pretty long code, but um, Chris, if anybody needs it, they can always email me at headquarters or go to the website and find it. Um, and our chapters are also doing a membership drive um, as well to try to get our renewals in. And I think, Alvin, you had a little news, too, of the day. Yeah, well, I also want to plug in for YPS, um, you know, our Young Professional Society for any advisors under age 45. We also have a YPS fam trip on Emerald Cruises on September 4 to 11. Um, as Andrew mentioned, it's also on ASA.org where you can find information on how to register. Register Registration ends um July 31st on three days. So we encourage anyone to come out. There's going to be uh, education sessions on branding and how to, how to up your game on luxury um, and selling river cruises. So we invite all the YPS members to come and join for that. And we do also have River Cruise Expo coming up again in Budapest in March of 23. It was a huge success. So there's pre-registration for that going on. And if you are an attendee to ask the Global Convention 2022, you will get $100 off registration for Puerto Rico. Yeah. So make sure you are in San Francisco, especially if you're on the West Coast. There's no excuse if you live in California. It's an easy flight. It's an easy drive, although easy drive. I don't know about the traffic kind of thing, but that could be a problem. But, you know, join us and, and experience what ASTA is all about and do make, make a new, I always tell her my new member session, make, if you don't make meet someone new, you haven't done it right. Yep. So that's, that's a few plugs from ASTA headquarters. That's you our big exclamation point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I certainly look forward to seeing both of you there here in a couple of weeks. Andrea Caulfield and Alvin Adriano, everyone. So grateful to both of you for your time today and that great discussion. And like I said, I'll see you guys in San Francisco at the ASTA Global Convention next month. Thanks, Chris, so much. Thank Thanks, Avoya. Thank, Thank you so much for, 
for, for both of your times. Next week, another very special episode. I'm traveling to Avoid Travel's Innovation Center for a series of meetings with senior management. And while I'm there, I'm inviting you to take a sneak peek at our amazing facility. This is where much of the Avoya magic happens. And we're excited to kind of pull back the curtain and show off this great space. Who are we going to talk to? What are we going to discuss? Well, you'll have to tune in to find out, which is just a fancy way of saying, I have no clue yet. But we know it's going to be highly informative. And it's certainly going to provide yet another look at our best in class resources and how they help our network of travel professionals. Last week, we launched our brand new promotion, and it was so successful, and we certainly appreciate everybody reaching out because, wow, do we love veterans, right? I mean, who doesn't? We certainly appreciate everything. I work in an industry that is based on freedom, the freedom to go places, to see things, to associate with people, and I certainly know where those freedoms stem from, so certainly appreciative of that. Um, Avoy is happy to announce we've got a new $100 off affiliation fee. All you have to do is reach out to us. We're more than happy to give you the details on that uh, and, and welcome you to the Avoya network. And we have resources. If you're new to the industry and you're just thinking, wow, this has always been my dream to be in the travel industry, we can help you get off on the ground on the right foot with programs like our Foundations for Early Success, our Avoya University, all of the programs that have made Avoya travel number one year after year after year. And guess what? Same thing for an experienced travel professional. We have resources that meet you where you are in the journey. So again, reach out to us. How do you reach out to us? Well, our contact information is pretty simple. There's my email, chris.green at avoyatravel.com. Avoya Network has a wealth of information that you could just find out about. Go to the website. You can always give us a call. We'd be more than happy. Oh, I think we're missing an eight in there. 1-888-497-4841, but all good. I think you probably figured that out. Hey, listen, thank you again to both of our fantastic guests this week. We certainly appreciate their time. We love our friends from Asta. A big thank you to Marissa and Annabella from Trade Marketing for producing our show, doing a wonderful week like they do every week. I'll be at that Innovation Center next Wednesday. It's a special to- uh, special day, normal time, 11.15 Pacific, 2.15 in the afternoon. Until then, take care, everyone.